You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragons, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of No More Future. So the last place we left off, we had just walked into the council room and, uh, pretty ominous looking place. It looks like a place where some, uh, Final Judgment esque stuff is, uh, held. So, uh, well, let's see what Isaac has in store for his hopefully not short future. Alright guys, here we go. Please sit back and enjoy. Let me change you for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up. Alright, let's go. <clears throat> okay. You enter a room unlike any you've seen in this building before. Spacious doesn't even begin to describe its size, which seems to stretch from one end of the building to the other, and with a roof so distant from your head that you could make that you could mistake it for a firmament itself. The room is rich in decor, filled to the brim with statues and monoliths ranging in color from the purest whites to the darkest of blacks, as well as numerous plants of strikingly similar colors. You're not sure whether the regal look of this place is supposed to command respect or, or fear. You step onto a stainless golden carpet, leading further into the room. Jasper and Mary are already a fair distance ahead of you, heading towards a large table on the other side, and you cautiously make haste to rejoin them. As you try to shorten the distance between the three of you, you give another glance to the spherical ceiling that, encap that encapsules the whole room as though it were a snow globe. You're quite sure this is the same sphere as the one you could see from outside Pandora's headquarters, which gives the building its iconic appearance. Does this mean you're standing at the top of the building, then? It you suppose it makes sense, given you're about to meet the men in charge of the whole company here. Still, this is rather strange. That globe appeared to be made of glass when you stared at it from the outside, but then why does it look like... Well, you're not sure what it looks like, truth be told. Oh, God. <coughs> oh, good. It sneezes. Sorry, guys. The surface is so uneven and strange, you could be mistaken for... Hey! Mary slows her pace down a tad to catch up with you, reaching over your back with one arm to draw you in as she whispers quietly in your ear, It's free real estate. No, no, no. No, that's not what she said. I know this place is creepy as hell, but I need you to look but I need you to look forward from now on, alright? God forbid these idiots think you aren't paying them the respect they think they deserve. You instinctively gulp at the Siamese's words and silently reprimand yourself for letting your gaze wander at a time when it really shouldn't be. You're not sure what sort of people these owners are, but given how much power they wield, you definitely don't want to be caught doing anything that might upset them. You take her advice to heart as you refocus your stare onto the desk on the other end of the room and towards the people sitting behind it. Oh lord. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, they're definitely regal looking. Two people sit at the farthest edge of the table. A rabbit and a pangolin. What the fuck is a pangolin? I know what a pangolin is in the South Park reference. <laughs> they appear to be rather advanced in years, and their curated attire suggests that they're far richer and more powerful than, they, than you'll probably ever be. They give you a handful of silent stares as you advance towards them, but for the most part they largely ignore you, prefer preferring to focus their attention towards the cat and the drake accompanying you. All in all, as off-putting as they seem, they don't strike you as particularly threatening, at least nowhere near as much as the other man sitting at that table right in the center. Yeesh. The bald eagle requires no introductions. You need only briefly glance at him to understand who this man truly is. Mr. Morgan is a grim reflection of his nephew, or perhaps Jasper is a brighter reflection of his grandfather. Either way, you can clearly see where the CEO got his posture and that grisly look in his eyes from. He appears to be the sort of man you would never, ever want to cross, or talk to, or exist on the same plane of existence as. He doesn't even seem to acknowledge you as the three of you grow closer, and you can't tell whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Amidst the silence that envelops the whole room like a blanket, Jasper steadily approaches the owner's desk, while you and the Siamese wait patiently behind. He keeps his arms folded behind his back, likely out of deference, as he turns to address his superiors. Mr. Algon, Mrs. Lightning, Grandfather. He gives a special nod to the eagle sitting at the center of the table, though he earns no visible reply from him from doing so. Good morning. I hope there weren't any issues with your flights. There weren't in spite of how quickly they had to be arranged for. I swear, you and your impromptu meetings. That man, Mr. Algon or whatever, appears to be rather quick to anger. Jasper didn't so much as look in his direction, he's already up in arms. Indeed. We haven't had a need for a meeting for quite a long while. But that doesn't make your insistence on calling us, calling us all here so hastily any less inconsiderate. 
The woman, on the other hand, appears far more calm and reserved, though by no means any friendlier. Even you can feel the air of indifference that exudes from her gaze alone, in spite of her attempts at concealing it, rather it through tranquility and politeness. However, neither she nor her companion on the other end of the table are the source of your worries and apprehension. Okay, maybe I should save that much deeper voice for him. I think, I think, he'd, uh, I think he needs that voice. The eagle sitting in between them hasn't moved an inch ever since the conversation began, as if he was made of stone. And yet, even that's not an apt analogy. Underneath his seemingly immobile gaze, you can feel a swarm of calculating thoughts hiding underneath, and a million eyes watching over every subtle movement in the room. Oh. Is that... Okay, Mr. Morgan, okay. So, would you care to explain yourself, Jasper? Even his voice is similar to the Verdant Drake, though perhaps even lower still in tone. I got it right! Luckily for him, Jasper isn't bothered in the slightest by his grandfather's chill-inducing voice, though it's probably because he's far more accustomed to it than you. I do apologize for rushing you all here with relatively little forewarning, but this meeting is indeed necessary, as you'll understand in just a few minutes. The situation of the synthetic project has reached a boiling point that neither I nor you can no longer ignore, and all this is because of the actions of this lady right here. Jasper suddenly turns to face you and Mary, his composed stance becoming a little more aggressive as he does so, making his feelings on the two of you as clear as the day for all to see. You, know, you, you expected the owners to be interested by the topics of conversation brought forth by the drake. The pangolin and the rabbit don't seem anywhere near as impressed by his words as either of you thought they'd be. <clears throat> so, this meeting's all about synthetics. Again, simply wonderful. Are you referring to the lot of them in general, or that one over there in particular? Clearly he means that one specifically, else there'd be no reason to let it witness this private meeting. Let it witness? Well, so much for hoping for the best. We're people who view you as nothing more than a machine, and this time they're the very ones responsible for the project that created you. Are Mary and her team truly the ones in this company willing to entertain the possibility of your humanity? But then why are these people financing a project they don't even believe in? You don't even have time to worry about that as Jasper continues where the pangolin left off. Correct, Miss Lightning. The synthetic is particularly relevant to our discussion here today, and so I thought it wise to <clears throat> invite him here alongside his maker, for purely demonstrational purposes, of course. Purely demonstrational purposes? Well, you should at least be happy that he's not going to ask you to defend yourself with your own words, even if the implications of that don't sit quite as well with you. Still, what in the world could he need you from you, then? You have a few ideas in mind already, and all of them have you on edge. Having said that, I reckon we've spent enough time introducing the topic. Allow me to explain why I've brought you here exactly. I'll be frank. I want Dr. Shelley to be removed from her position, and for the synthetic project existence to be re-evaluated. The whole room falls silent with shock at Jasper's thunderous statement. Even you are left thoroughly speechless before the Drake's bold words. You knew this meeting was important already, but never to this extent. Have you gone mad? Without Dr. Shelley's knowledge and expertise, there would hardly be a project to reevaluate. You're essentially asking that we pull the plug on this entire initiative. In a way, I suppose you're correct. Yes. This is bad. Terribly bad. Mary and her team are the only people in this entire building who seem to care about you in the slightest. Even if the project could stay afloat without her, there's no telling what manner of disasters could befall you in her absence. Especially considering everything you've done in the past few days. You send a pleading look Mary's way, hoping that she will catch on to how much this discussion means to you, but her eyes are transfixed onto the belligerent dragon, like a warrior ready to parry whatever the enemy throws at them. You hope that she understands how high the stakes have been raised now. I still don't understand why you'd want Dr. Shelley gone. I'm aware that there's always been some bad blood between the two of you, but... Bad blood? That's putting it mildly, Miss Lightning. But to answer your question... Dr. Shelley has proven herself to be a dangerous individual, in charge of an even more dangerous project. She's not only unfit for her role, but an active detriment to this entire company. As such, I ask that you purge her from her duties effective immediately. Mary's eyes slide towards the ceiling at the CEO's accusation, though that's hardly enough to stop, the spew, to stop the spew of vitriol that is coming her way. Across the ten years I've been working here, Dr. Shelley has, been always, has always been particularly difficult to keep in check. Her perennial lateness and almost total inability to, to relay her progress reports to me on time is nothing short of legendary. And in the past few years, these nasty habits of hers have only grown worse. Her progress reports are shady at best. Her reasoning behind her operative choices whenever provided is utterly nonsensical, and it's impossible to tell just what in the world she's doing at any given time. 
How in the world are we meant to trust and rely on someone who deliberately hides so much of what she's doing from her superiors? The feline reacts to the torrent of accusations with nothing more than a condescending sneer. Maybe the problem is that you think I'm meant to be kept in check to begin with. You couldn't possibly have heard that right, you reason. That's your reply, Mary? You couldn't think of anything better than that? She's confident in herself, you'll give her that, but confidence alone isn't enough to, isn't isn't enough when all you have to defend yourself are snarky and unhelpful remarks like that. However, if her goal was to rile up the dragon before her even further, she most certainly achieved it. Why you? Before you can interject, Mary begins to explain herself properly. I'll admit, I sometimes forget to deliver utterly unnecessary paperwork on time, and seldom provide reports on the progress of my team. But that's to be expected given the scale of what I'm working on, on a, with a day well what I'm working with on a day to day basis. And really, why in the world am I supposed to keep you up to date with what I'm doing anyway? You may be the CEO, but that doesn't mean you're my boss. Don't try to weasel your way out of this, Shelley. Just because you're the head of the synthetic department doesn't mean you don't answer to anyone. Until proven otherwise, you're an employee of this company. The head of your department, no less. And that means that you report directly to me like everyone else does. As convincing as his argument sounds to you, Mary doesn't sound impressed by it in the least. Like I already said, there's really no reason why I should keep you updated on every little thing we're doing, like you so often ask of me and my team. After all, the only reason you're ever seeing this project in the first place is to keep track of our budget, and I make sure to keep our reports on that front squeaky clean. So Jasper only looks after the, fu after the funding of the project. Not unsurprising given all you've learned about him so far. If that's true, then perhaps Mary's argument isn't quite as shoddy as you thought it was. It's not that left hand's job to know what the right one is doing and all that. But even you can tell that it's not going to be quite that simple. The budgets are rather curated, I'll admit. At the very least, you don't shy away from highlighting how much of our money you're sapping away every day. Money that could benefit hundreds of thousands of far more deserving businesses instead of being wasted on this farce of a project. Ah, uh, give me a break. You can act as... Mm, excuse me, guys. You can act offended as much as you want, but even you can't deny the truth. All the billions upon billions of dollars you're wasting helping people die could be spent in countless ways on businesses that could help people live. It makes a fair argument, you have to admit. You can definitely see why someone who doesn't believe in the useful usefulness of this technology would want the money invested in, in, it, invested in it devoted to other alternatives. But this still doesn't tell you why he despises synthetics to begin with. It's, and it's also not enough to deter Mary from railing into her superior further. We already are helping them live. We're giving, we're giving hope to those who have none, and paving the road for innovation the likes of which this world has never seen before. Just because you refuse to believe it doesn't make me unfit to continue my work. That's not how it works, you mindless. That's enough. Mr. Morgan quiets down the whole room with nothing more than a well-timed shout. We're getting off topic. We're here to have a serious discussion, not a screaming match between children. He turns towards his nephew once again, a cold flame burning in his eyes. I will give you a final opportunity to make your case. Make it count. Jasper hardly flinches under his grandfather's ice-cold stare, in spite of the pressure he handedly feels upon his shoulders. All in all, his arguments so far haven't quite managed to make the impact either of you thought they'd have. The owners don't look particularly impressed, and Mary didn't even need to say that much to shatter his momentum. But you know deep down that this doesn't matter in the slightest. Jasper has barely begun tearing into the two of you, and the greatest hurdle to overcome is yet to appear. I understand. In that case, if I may... The Drake attempts to, re to rein himself in as he, distri as he distributes some smooth-looking tablets to the owners, and it doesn't take long for both of you and your friend to figure out what they're meant for. I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the now viral video that involve our synthetic here, where he clearly pushes a police officer around, disregards his instructions, then proceeds to flee the scene as though nothing happened. The video begins playing in the background, the all-too-familiar voices of those officers playing loudly both through the speakers and in your mind. This is where the true battle begins. The moment where the distracted looks in the owner's gazes might degenerate into something far worse. I don't need to explain how the actions of that synthetic threaten the stability and reputation of this institution. It sets a dangerous precedent for these androids, for us who are creating them. The video has already been seen over a billion times by customers all over the globe, and... We are aware of that, yes. What of it? The rabbit's tired words don't appear to mean much at first. Yet... Oh, what was that? Mr. Hazard, okay. Yet they're, they're, they're enough to shock and confuse you and, ja you and Jasper both. The penguin interjects next. You say you don't need to explain why that android's actions are concerning, but I personally disagree. From what I've seen, the synthetic reacted adequately, given the circumstances. It's certainly not enough to call this project and Dr. Shelley's leadership position into question. 
You thought they'd react poorly upon learning of that altercation. Jasper most certainly did. And yet they seem hesitant to treat it as anything more than a minor distraction at best, and a total insignificance at worst. As hopeful and utterly confused as this makes you feel, the Drake doesn't appear interested in giving up in the slightest. And why do you think that, Mrs. Lightning? Miss Lightning? The Penguin seems to lose her grip on the conversation for a second, uncertain of what exactly the Drake is inquiring. What are you talking about? I'm saying that maybe you only believe that because you think this is a one-time thing. Because we could always shove all the burdens of responsibility onto those policemen on account of this being a lone freak accident. But, that precise, but that's precisely why we're here today. Because this wasn't just a one-time thing. That incident was only the first time our synthetic here did something regrettable like attacking somebody unjustifiably. Indeed, this is what this conversation has been leading up to all this time. The incident you always knew Jasper was going to mention and only wondered when he'd actually do so. You've never been more scared of where this conversation is going to head next, and neither have your inter, inter neither have your interlo interlocutors. That's, that's always been an odd word for me to pronounce. Interlocutors have been more befuddled. It wasn't the first time. I haven't heard anything about this. Of course you wouldn't know about it. Doctor Shelley here, as I made clear earlier, has a gnarly habit of keeping all the crucial facts to herself until it is too late. With the FBI already on the hunt, it might be a matter of days before the truth comes out, and everybody becomes aware of what transpired. Harry gives Jasper a blood-chilling look as he tiptoes around the subject, looking simultaneously annoyed and powerless to stop him. You're pretty sure he's enjoying this, although it's rather hard to tell that thanks to the apathetic look on his face. Nevertheless, this new information he has provided has clearly won in the favor of the owners. Even Mr. Morgan seems intrigued somewhat. What exactly are you referring to? Why, I'm referring to the fight that our synthetic started on the evening of the very day he attacked that police officer. The Drake suddenly turns to face you, a triumphant look in his eyes, followed suit by all the people sitting behind the desk. You feel a sudden urge to run away from where you stand, hoping to escape from the consequences of your own actions, but somehow you manage to remain right where you stand, silent and still like a glorified statue. According to his summary of events, he engaged a group of thugs who were supposedly threatening another boy and brutally fought them off. All of a sudden, the altercation with the police officer is no longer looking like an isolated incident, is it? The rabbit and the pangolin appear rather startled by the truth revealed by the CEO, and definitely more invested in this conversation than they ever were before. They turn to face the scientist at your side. He speaks the truth. Mary hesitates for a moment, unsure of what to reply. She could admit the truth the truth, or she could try denying it. Knowing her, she's most certainly considering the latter option. But Jasper won't give her time to come up with a plan that easy. It's a yes or no question, Dr. Shelley. Answer it. A few moments later, the fin the feline admits defeat with an almost imperceptible sigh. It's true. Yes. Isaac did partake in a fight while returning home the other day, and we know this because we have video evidence from his point of view of the events. You were being recorded. Mary never mentioned that before, though you suppose it makes sense considering how quickly everything unfolded. After a few tentative seconds, the rabbit moves to inquire further about the subject. I see. Does anyone else know about this within the company? Not at all. The only one's aware of what transpired to me, Jasper and Isaac, of course. That's a big fat lie if you ever heard one. What is Mary even thinking, lying like that to her superiors? Good thing you didn't tell Jasper about Natalie's involvement yesterday. Had you done so, you would have certainly claimed both your heads by now. What about that other kid and those thugs Jasper mentioned earlier? The youth fled as soon as Isaac arrived on the scene, whereas the hoodlums that attacked him, well, I don't think I need to explain why I will never hear from them again. There's no way they'd be able to implicate Isaac or Pandora without landing themselves behind bars as well. It's safe to say that this issue has taken care of itself. Yet more lies coming from the feline's sweet-talking mouth, and all of them could easily be disproven if anyone here asked to watch the footage she's so confidently, re she's so confidently referring to. You pray to whatever god is out there that you'll somehow manage to get out of this here without a, second vi without a second of that video shown to the owners. At the very least, your combined deception has managed to keep all your friends out of harm's way for the time being. If you weren't utterly terrified right now, you could almost you could almost feel proud of yourself. So Dr. Shelley boldly admits that this thing she made ruthlessly assaulted those men the other day, and we're still debating the merits of keeping either of them around. The enraged cat Sophie turns to face her superior, an outraged look in her eyes. You're mis you're misrepresenting the facts, Jasper. You're acting as though Isaac deliberately sought a fight when that was anything but the case. Those idiots swung first, and all Isaac did was react accordingly. They were the ones who escalated the confrontation. What else was he supposed to do, given the situation? Not be in it, for starters. I'm sure your android had every opportunity to flee after, even after being attacked. But instead he chose to stay, fully aware of the consequences of his actions. That's what Daphne told you the other day, that you had no reason to get involved, or rather, that you had every reason not to. And you fought those people off nonetheless, in spite of all the trouble it would conjure. Just because you thought it was the right thing to do. 
You're not sure how much that justification will hold up in this meeting room, but Mary appears determined to get that point across as much as she can. And leave that kid to be harassed and possibly hurt or killed? What sort of heartless monster would do that? Isaac acted selflessly in defense of that young boy, in spite of the consequences. If that doesn't prove that... What it proves is that he is as reckless and deranged as you are, Dr. Shelley. The Drake shuts the feeling up with a deafening roar. You forget your place. You think that this is some sort of children's cartoon, and that your android over there is some sort of righteous superhero that is exempt from, con from the consequences of their actions. But we are a company. The most important one on the planet, for that matter. And if someone else were to find out the truth about that, about what happened, the consequences would be catastrophic for all of us. Especially considering that you explicitly planned ahead for something like that, like that fight to occur, and outfitted your synthetic accordingly. Mary's jaw swings open at the sound of Jasper's accusation, and even the owners themselves don't seem to know how to react to his startling words. Excuse me? Again, Jasper turns to face you. You! Show them! It takes you a little while to understand what he's talking about, and when you do, your, your uncertainty reaches heights you never experienced before. Is she really asking me to show them that thing? How does he even know about it? I never even mentioned it to him. More importantly, should I do it? If I do, they'll most certainly... Before you can even feel the Drake's impatient gaze piercing right through your steel-clad skin, you can feel Mary's gentle hand resting on your shoulder. It's okay. Go ahead. So she says, but is it truly fine to show them, knowing what will follow? Nonetheless, it doesn't appear as though you have a choice in the matter. All you can do is hope for the best as you think as you think your as you think your tail open and unveil to the horrified rabbit pangolin what hides within. Is that a fucking taser? <laughs> and you brought that thing here, where it could kill us in all a heartbeat if it wished. They look utterly terrified, just as you were afraid they would be, just like Jasper was hoping they would be. At last, you see you see or you're seeing my point exactly. This woman deliberately si sicked her untrained mutt onto the world and equipped it with illegal weaponry that'll get us all imprisoned. Now you understand how our customers out there feel, knowing that this creature is free to roam the streets unsupervised every single day. How they'll feel if this technology is ever allowed to be released to the public. His baleful gaze meets, ga meets Mary's once again, devious thoughts likely swarming his mind as he speaks. But I'm sure you don't mind, do you, Shelley? You knew perfectly well what you were doing when you bestowed that taser onto that android. It's as though you expected... No, it's as though you were looking for something like this to happen. Oh, please, you're looking too deep into my actions. All I did was make sure Isaac would be ready should the worst come to pass. It's surely nowhere near as bad as you think it is. Nowhere near? Are you out of your mind? You're putting the lives of innocent people in danger, all for the sake of testing and experimenting, exposing them to this abomination of science for your sick pleasure. Abomination of science? Surely you jest. He's a person who was forced against his will to partake in a situation none of us wished. He's a menace to society, Shelley. Armed to the teeth with illegal weaponry, with an invulnerable body that could kill people by just looking at them wrong. You're clearly exaggerating. No, you're the one who isn't taking this nearly as seriously as she should. You're so lost in the nonsense you're spouting you don't even see the threat you're unleashing on this company, no, on the world. I won't say ugly Bible you let this android tear down everything we've built for all for the sake of some make-believe mortality. He turns to face the owners once again, an angered but deeply focused look on his face. Surely you agree with me. But no one answers. We take a long look at the rabbit and the pangolin. They seem uncertain of how best to react to everything that just happened. Not like you can blame them. You're completely fooled. You completely fooled yourself. All that you can do, much like them, is send anxious looks in the direction of the ever serious eagle, who appears to be the only one left in the room with anything left to say. Doctor Shelley, I don't recall any mentions of taser tails and similar gadgetry in your pitch for the synthetic project so many decades ago. Care to explain these recent deviations in your designs? Amidst the shocked looks of both you and the dragon, Mary gracefully steps forward, a proud and confident smile on her face. I assume I don't need to explain our need to preserve our current synthetics, given the wealth of knowledge and data we can acquire from them. The non-lethal weaponry we installed in Isaac was meant to protect him should he become involved in a dangerous situation. That's all. Considering that neither the FBI nor the police have provided suitable alternatives, I took it upon myself to provide Isaac with alternative, and most importantly, discreet methods of protection. You have expected to try and defend herself further, to elucidate all the reasons why the truth isn't anywhere near as bad as it obviously as it obviously so obviously is. But she doesn't. And clearly she doesn't have to. Hmm. So this could be considered a means of protecting the merchandise. It's an unconventional situation solution, but given the circumstances, the two people at the Eagle's side buy into her excuses without a shred of hesitation, as though she just explained in rigorous detail why two plus two equals four. 
As for Jasper's grandfather, he merely limits himself to a curt nod and pensive grunt, much to the ires of his nephew. Please tell me you're not buying into this! The avian shoots an angry look at his younger relative, quietly letting him know that the time to build his case is over. He then focuses his gaze once more onto the cocky-looking lady before him. Dr. Shelley, I need to remind you that these non-lethal solutions must not make it into the final product. I can see why you'd feel the need to implement them at this stage, but what Jasper said is right. They are a step too far. The feline shudders a little at the eagle's implicit request, but she respectfully bows as she acknowledges it. They absolutely won't, Mr. Morgan. They were nothing more than a temporary solution to guarantee the protection of our research material, so to say. I will directly proceed to the removal of that taser from Isaac's tail. I will not bother us again. Good. Then I'd call this matter settled, if there's nothing left to add. SETTLED! Now more than ever, the viridescent Drake looks on the verge of snapping someone's neck. You're truly to let her continue- You're truly to let her continue her work, with nothing more than a slap on the wrist? That is correct. You're right, of course, about the danger it would pose our company if the public became aware of that synthetic's actions. But as long as we can keep this accident wrapped up, we needn't worry about distractions like those. As much, as such, I ask that all copies of the footage relating to the event be destroyed immediately. No one must find out the truth of what transpired. You needn't say twice, Mr. Morgan. I will take care of that myself and ensure that no traces remain. You honestly can't believe what you've heard just now. He's actually asking Mary to destroy the only piece of evidence that could prove just how full of shit she really is. The look on Jasper's face is so priceless it could belong in an art gallery. And perhaps he's cursing himself under his breath for not asking the footage be reviewed before it was too late, though, of course, you can't be certain. All he can do is see, it seems, as helpful, helplessly watches his grandfather ends all the hopes of things going his way before his eyes. Now then, if that is all... The eagle makes as if to stand up and, and conclude the meeting right there and then, but Jasper irresolutely steps forward to prevent that. You're joking, right? You're joking, right? After everything that woman and her synthetic pet have done, you can't possibly let them... ENOUGH! The elder eagle's voice echoes in the room like a thunder in a storm. It's enough to quiet everyone down in an instant and turn them into a shriveling infant, even the two people sitting by his side. Both you, Mary, and Jasper immediately turn to face the latter's grandfather, whose grim expression remains an inter as indecipherable as ever. We have entertained this endless discussion for long enough. I believe it is time we resolve this quarrel once and for all. Mr. Morgan turns to face his grandson, who doesn't seem to bat an eye even under the weight of his ice-cold stare. A normal person would be quaking in their boots under such pressure, but the entire extent of his reaction is a few twitches of his fingers. You've made your points ample clear, Jasper. Your dedication to this company is admirable, and I wholeheartedly respect your viewpoints on the matter. But it is not your place to argue with which projects we should finance, and which ones we should not. That decision lies with us, and us alone. The Drake makes as if to retort, but he ultimately sends all the words he wished to share down his gullet. Imagine that interrupting the Eagle in the midst of one of his arguments is a mistake you can only make once. Our decision to finance this synthetic project was made long ago for a reason, and that's final. We will no longer discuss the merits or not of this project, regardless of your feelings on it. Your worries over the funds we've sunk into this technology are noted, but if Dr. Shelley deems it necessary to ensure the success of this initiative, then that's a sacrifice we are willing to endure. Even more suppressed grumblings from the Drake, especially now that the Eagle's words are beginning to rouse a smile from the Siamese. Is Mary truly going to win this debate so easily after everything Jasper revealed? Judging from the Eagle's tone, that may well be the case. We understand your apprehensions over Dr. Shelley's questionable work ethic, but she has proven over the last four decades to be an invaluable asset to this company that simply cannot be replaced. Her methods may be unconventional, but they seem to have proven to work time and time again. So long as she can fulfill her obligations and deliver what we've agreed to with her, how she goes about achieving this goal is irrelevant. Especially to you. You see the reptile's fist tightening and shaking behind his back, and for a second you feel that Jasper may just do something extremely stupid, but just like always, he somehow manages to exhale his frustrations out of his nostrils right before he can unleash them, most of them at least. Understood, sir. I will not question your judgment again. Good. I appreciate your consideration and understanding. Keep to your duties, and I assure you that your dedication to this company will be greatly rewarded. Now that's a vague promise if you've ever heard one, and it's clearly not enough to please the fuming Drake in the slightest. But he has no further room to argue, so all he can do is bow politely and pretend as though he's satisfied with his grandfather's words. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there for now. Oh, a little bit of an extra long video for you today. Oh man. Oh, we got to meet the owners. Oh man. That's terrifying. <laughs> Man, oh, especially the eagle. Man, if he's 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 worse if he's if he's worse than Jasper, I don't know. He might be better than Jasper actually. He seems to be not nearly as hot-headed. 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And go download No More Future. Sedge and his team are awesome. They deserve some more love. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, and I love you.